people come. First of all, I would like to say uh, thanks to Barbara, to Michele, and to our other distinguished colleagues from Santa Severa, Santa Marinella, and Rome. Being here is a wonderful thing. I would like to talk on our um, projects, um, our underwater survey, and uh, our land project during this presentation and without the moderator probably I'm going to speak in one hour because I don't see the moderator, it's very good. <laughs> okay, um, I'll moderate it okay, thank you. Um, I want to add some promotion to my uh, presentation and um, first of all I would like to start who we are. We are probably, some of you know, very active on underwater archaeology field, not only in Turkey but in the world, because we are the establisher of UNESCO Philippine Underwater Archaeology Network. In 2012, with totally five universities, including Southampton, South Denmark, Alexandria, uh, and Flinders. And us, we have organized UNESCO Unity with Underwater Archaeology Network. Now we are about 40 distinguished universities um, from the world, such as Cadiz University, which is represented by Felipe. Uh, we behalf of UNESCO Unity with Underwater Archaeology Network, we organize several activities for especially create some infrastructure studies on African countries. Another, another uh, thing what we are doing is ICOMOS. Probably you know we have a committee named International Committee on Underwater Cultural Heritage connected to ICOMOS. And I'm the secretary of this committee, by the way. Uh, with help of um, ICOMOS, we are doing some underwater cultural heritage activities, such as a new book project and <coughs> poster activities in ICOMOS meetings. Now we are in Santa Severa and we are part of the organization of SOMA Symposiums. We did this uh, beautiful symposium in Cadiz last year. And two years ago, with Professor Saidi Fazuli, we organized it in St. Petersburg. And five years ago, we did it in Moscow too. We have different activities too, such as Kema International Underwater Days, <coughs> our base in Antalya. Um, Kemer is the part of Antalya, it's one of the tur touristical places. We have a very nice base at there, just focused for underwater archaeology, included guest houses, labs, and the classrooms, libraries, and other facilities just for underwater archaeology. It is also the coordination center of UNESCO Unity Underwater Archaeology Network. And uh, on behalf of UNESCO and ICOMOS, we organize several meetings, especially on protection of underwater cultural heritage. And uh, just last week, we have organized 11th Underwater Research Symposium on 15 November 2018 with uh, very distinguished scientists from about 12 countries. And uh, we have decided that we will organize a uh, 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 underwater resource symposium in Crimea next year, next September. And um, another activity of us just happened last week is the 21st National Underwater Research uh, Science and Technology Meeting. 
mainly focused to scientists from Turkey. And what we did is very important actually uh, is a new program for protection of underwater cultural heritage. Probably you know there are some different diving organizations in the world such as PEDI, such as SSI, such as NAUI and CMAS2. And unfortunately, the main of this kind of diving organizations vary just for the profit and they prefer to use underwater archaeological objects. Uh, they created different type of programs such as shipwreck detectives, such as archaeology divers, such as shipwreck hunters. And this way, uh, to teach amateurs to dive to archaeology just for profit is not a right way. In our opinion, we have to teach the people who are amateurs, who are just divers, how to protect them. And this program is the Protection of Underwater Cultural Heritage Program. We already uh, uh, promote this program last beginning of last uh, uh, June in Paris during the CIMAS, ICOMOS and UNESCO meetings. Then uh, they prepare a book. The book is just for the amateurs. This is not a scientific book. This is just for two stars divers who will be able to dive to archaeology what they have to do, on what they have to do. And last week, in four days program, Turkish Underwater Federation did invite to two and three stars CMAS diving instructors to this program. And quota was 125 instructors and became full in one day. Now you see the registration process in Kemer. And the program was started four days in the frame of Kemer Marine Science Week between 15 to 18 November. It's just one few days ago. Um, what we did, uh, the lectures were given by two uh, by the scientists from UNESCO, ICOMOS, Turkish Minister of Culture, Turkish Nautical Archaeology Foundation, and some archaeology professors from different universities of Turkey. Totally 128 diving instructors have joined to this um, program. And we teach them what they have to do when they see an archaeological remain in the water, you know, inside. As scientists, as underwater archaeologists, our country's coastline is 8,500 kilometers. We have 8,500 kilometers coastline, and there are only four different underwater archaeology research institutions who dive for detection of underwater cultural heritage and excavate into the shipwrecks, for example. Uh, we have just few, but there are amazing number of the underwater archaeology remains. Uh, in our country, it's actually the same to Spain, same to Italy, same to Greece. Um, and uh, when we teach about 130 diving instructors, and when these diving instructors teach their students how to approach the archaeology, how to how to inform <coughs> the government about the wrecks, about the sunken remains, about the sunken settlements, it means that we will have a big pool to collect information via amateurs. Until now, we know that we had very limited information by uh, amateur divers. First, we will have a big pool, information pool by amateurs. Second, we uh, have already teach their instructors and they will teach their students how to approach the archaeology. They don't touch them. If they see, they just officially inform to the government about them. It means that we are going to program uh, uh, we are going to uh, protect underwater cultural heritage remains in Turkey. After the uh, examination of total 128 uh, diving instructors, about 118 of them became as instructor of the protection of underwater cultural heritage of Turkish Underwater Federation. They have signed an agreement. They will officially inform to the government when they see an archaeological object. Now they know what is archaeological object and uh, why we have to protect underwater cultural heritage. They only signed the agreement. What is the difference if they don't sign the agreement, if they sign the agreement? 
if they say sign the agreement and if the police catch them with an archaeological remains now they have no right that they don't know what is amphora for example because they sign and they know what is amphora it means that if they know what is amphora and if they uh, 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 collect them from the shipwreck and the penalty is double in this moment. And moreover, they know what is the archaeological remain. Second, they will teach their students in this way with the standard training system, ready books, um, ready PowerPoint presentations, and ready websites, and their students also will sign the same agreement. And the bribing is free of charge. None of the direct instructors will take any profit from the underwater culture heritage training program. And moreover, examination of their students will be done by online examination system by us. Yes, they will teach their students, but we will uh, exam online to their students. They already prepared by underwaterculturalheritage.net website of us. So, I can easily say that since 22 November 2018, protection of underwater cultural heritage is a program is a must course for CIMAS two star divers uh, by Turkish Underwater Federation with the support of the Minister of Culture of Turkey and, uh, and UNESCO. It means that if a diver wants to be advanced diver, if a diver wants to be two star divers, if they don't take this course, they are not going to be a, a two-star divers. So this is a mass course, and it is the first time in the world it happened in Turkey uh, and as an official program on protection of underwater cultural heritage, and we are very proud about it. Okay, now I'm going to start to the, uh, the presentation side. Is there any question, by the way, in this, um, on this program? Okay. Uh, behalf of the Minister of Culture, we are responsible about almost all of the Turkish Mediterranean coast. Um, we have a big research and excavation ship and we have good infrastructure. We are detecting all the shipwrecks and uh, uh, all the archaeological remains. When we find any archaeological remains, we give a code number to them and their coordinates are reporting to the government as the database. And also during the winter time, we are working in scientific approach. What they are, and when they are, when they sunk, for example. Now you see just examples to try to four stone anchors, which found uh, 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 during the during the summer. Maybe they are Bronze Age, but we are not completely sure they are Bronze Age or not. But mainly, Yumurta the Harbor is the uh, one of the eastern harbor of. Um, Adana coastline and Turkish Mediterranean coast, and we have found four different shipwrecks, mainly dated to the Middle Age. Um, and also the amphoras, as you know, we are also focusing the amphora king sites, and these amphoras are the amphoras of the Turkish Mediterranean coast, not the Eastern Mediterranean, but they mainly Kilikian amphoras, especially later on, one type of amphoras are the Kilikian amphoras. And we say Kilikian type, Kilikian type 6. They all from the coastline of Turkish Mediterranean. Um, we have a rescue excavation uh, at the coast of Alanya, which is part of Antalya, and we dated them to autumn, uh, one, probably one, um, 1074, later than 1074, because the gold coins are dated to 1074. And now I'm very proud to inform you on a new uh, wreck. Um, probably you know that the oldest shipwreck uh, was known Ulubrun wreck. And Ulubrun wreck is dated to 14th century BC. The excavator of Ulubrun shipwrecks, uh, ship shipwreck, uh, um, said that uh, they have found small ingots pillow type small ingots, far, um, five sm uh, small pillow type anchor, uh, ingots and they said that they are earlier type of the anchors because uh, the ingots are uh, uh, quite different than this one. 
And there is only one example at New York Metropolitan Museum, and the four examples are at um, Athens National Museum. And uh, two months ago, we have found a new wreck dated to 16th to 15th century BC, and the cargo of the wreck is pill of type of the uh, copper ingots. The first time, officially, I'm informed people in a symposium. This is the photo scan of the wreck. And the uh, in situ cargo are 73 um, pillow type, pillow shape, uh, copper ingots. And this is actually an amazing thing. There are a lot of things to talk on this subject, but uh, perhaps after the excavation next year I'll be able to share it with you. Okay, another subject of us, uh, I'm free as the organization of the symposium, I guess, isn't it? The moderator, do I have time? Thank you very much. Dana Islands. Um, to be honest, we are in a very beautiful place for underwater archaeology. We are in a very beautiful place for seamanship history. Uh, because here is Kilikia, the famous Kilikia empires came from the coast of Kilikia, the Likia and Pamphylia, the, uh, the three important geographical archaeological regions, and this island is at the center of the Kilikia. Uh, in 2015, when we were doing underwater archaeological survey on behalf of the Minister of Culture, we found many objects from Bronze Age until, uh, until 12th century AD around of the islands. Then when we have approached the island, we saw some sunken platforms in the water, which is close to the north coast of the island. Then we, when we went to the island, on the island, we saw uh, slipways. Before uh, when we go to the island, we spent one, uh, for one slipway five years. We didn't excavate. One slipway for five years. Then when we went to island, we saw about 100 slipways. So five years is a very important time for human life. But then after five years, you saw about 100 uh, slipways. Then in 2016, when we went back again to the island, total, we saw the total slipway numbers are 276. 276 slipway is more than all Mediterranean institute slipways. Probably you know the famous specialist Blackman and Boris Ranko with the help of Calliope Baika, they already published a book. Uh, uh, total number of Dana Island slipways, institute slipways of Dana Island, are more than all pre uh, published uh, institute slipways of the Mediterranean. We are very lucky like this. Why it is? Because the island is an island and uh, it is already the property of the government and no one came and built anything since about 800 years. The last, last uh, the culture with it, some uh, small building was the crusaders uh, from, um, from Rhodos Island. Um, okay, there are all known type of the slip base can see on the island. All known type of slip base, which was already published by Blackman. Continuously, about on 1,500 kilometers, uh, we have drawn, of course, uh, all the slip bays. Um, I'm going back again to the subject, but why this island is selected as a shipyard? Of course, first of all, as an island, it's very safety. Secondly, the cedar is the main material of the ships. We were just around of the island. So, as you know, uh, during the second millennium BC, the cedar trees from Lebanon went to the Egypt about 1,000 kilometers far from Egypt, but now the cedar forests are just 5 kilometers far from the island. So, the island is on the source of the cedar trees. And all kinds of other trees, like pine trees and other um, sandal trees, for example, are just on or around of the island. You see the green. Um, part at the right side are just the forests. Uh, as I said, uh, uh, 
uh, all type of the slip phase. Why here is selected as slip phase? Because it needs an, an angle. And the angle from 5 to 10 degrees angle is the natural angle to take these spaceships from sea to land, from land to sea. So the naturally the rock type is very available, very solid and uh, easily uh, changeable uh, according to the shape of the slip phase. And at the left you see the cradle, which is still using the main part of the Mediterranean. And you also at the down part you see the, uh, uh, the channels for the cradles. Uh, actually, this is just one type of the slip phase. And the bollards, uh, before my presentation there were several bollards. Yes, they were very good bollards to light presentations and also we have similar and different bollards too um, on the islands. And the rock is easily uh, cut and they cut the rocks to create the bollards. As I said, different type of bollards. Especially at the light side of the bollard is not the tying the ship, but when they were taking the ship from sea to the land, they were using these bollards. Okay, one of the technique of the Dana Island, uh, uh, at the middle under of the arrow, uh, you see the bollards, how they use them. So this technique have used on the islands. We understood because of the channels. Okay, as I said, the safety harbor, it's close to the strong storms. And the strategical position at the Eastern Mediterranean is the, 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 the center of the Kilikia. And we know that during the First World War time, two spies from English MI5 uh, went to the island and they hide themselves about three months uh, to observe the German and Ottoman um, sea actions. And it just uh, uh, the distance between mainland and uh, the island is about two kilometers, easily approachable from the land. And moreover, um, by ships, easily approach without any obstacle to the coastline. By the way, you can see um, Uh, this is our ship, the size of the ship is 27 meters and this is one of the slipway and this type of the ships can easily approach until here and probably the wooden construction they can easily take them to the land and as I said there are about 300 different slipways like this on the island. Okay, um, the boat slipways, about 17 slipways for the boats and small size slip phase, about 134 slip phase. 134 slip phase are the size of the seamen people. You know, the seamen, one of the phenomenon of the late Bronze Age. The name of the island is Dana Island. Dana name came from Adania, from 16th century BC. The Kilikia region, the other name of Kilikia region is Danuna. Danians or Danunas are one of the society who attacked Egypt at the late um, Bronze Age. So, we are not sure yet, but the name of Dana Island is the name of Adania. Adania is the name of the Kilikia. And probably here could be also the, the, uh, the shipyard of the, one of the sea, uh, uh, sea tribes of the uh, sea people. We don't know yet, but this is a possibility. So, the size of this small size uh, slip base are very fit to uh, size of the late Bronze Age warships. Medium size uh, slip base about 9 to 1, and large slip base are available for Tirureme uh, and bigger than Tirureme warships. Uh, uh, totally, we have um, 34. Okay, one of the techniques they used on the island is this one. Of course, they have used uh, some animals uh, to take the ships with the help of the people. And the te other techniques they use on the island. The cradle system. And of course, uh, you see now different type of slip bays. And these are different type of slip bays. And these are different type of slip base, but all of them on the islands. 
Uh, and of course, if you have a shipyard, you need the workshops, you need the houses for the carpenters, for the soldiers, and the families of them. There are a lot of buildings which was covered by the vegetation, untouched, and behind of the slipways. One of them is this one, by the way. Okay, um, and this one, these are the slipways, and this part is just, this part is clean by the, from the vegetation, and we have drawn that. Uh, uh, there are a lot of uh, buildings behind of the slipways, and we saw a temple remains, and the church remains too. And at the top of the uh, island, uh, at the west, west top of the island, there are one castle which is dated to the Iron Age, then also the 7th century AD. And this one, you cannot see any uh, drawing in the book of the black man, because these are completely unknown. I also share this the images with our colleagues like Calliope also, they said that we don't know, we didn't see anything like this, but this is very obviously, these are related to the ram unit of the warship. You see, this is one of the iron ram, we have found it 35 meters behind of the island, and uh, they were able to produce iron ramps, by the way, and these are just from, for the front of the ships, and all of them are um, for probably the ramming unit of the ships. As I said, Kilike is famous for the iron mines and they, the people who were on the island were available to melt the iron and they have used um, some workshops. Uh, these are just uh, the melted um, irons and there are more than 500 kilograms we have found without excavation. And of course the cisterns, I gave it to my, one of my students and uh, her study was the cisterns of the island and we have detected 300 cisterns on the island. 300 cisterns on the island means that uh, during the summer months 11,000 people can stay on the island. 11,000 but the island is small. In the 6th century BC uh, the famous New Babylon king Nerigilisar came to island. And one of the names of the island is Pitusu or Pitusa. And he wrote that Pitusu was like a mountain at the middle of the sea. And 6,000 soldiers on the island have resisted to the uh, New Babylon um, um, army. So we know that 6,000 soldiers were on the island during the 6th century BC and uh, Nerigilisar um, army uh, captured to the island. So, no water on the island, as you see from the cisterns, no available place for the agriculture, um, no available place for the animal farm, for example. Why 6,000 soldiers? Why 6,000 soldiers were on the island? Because it's just a small island. It is just probably related to the shipyard possibility. Okay, these are the systems of the island. And of course, there are three main necropolis, and some of them have been dated to 6th century BC. We didn't excavate, and we don't know the earliest one, but we have found some remains I'm going to show. There are stone quarries, and we have found one shipwreck um, uh, uh, with uh, block stones. Probably, and also the other remains are later on one click attack six and for us and we have dated to the shipwrecks in 6th century AD. It means that during the 6th century, 5th and 6th century AD, uh, the shipyards were not used uh, enough and the character of the island is going to change. This summer we also have found uh, more than this, uh, about 276 slip bays, 14 small boat slip bays. And all of them, you see them, and all of them are the construction for the uh, small boats just behind or between two big slip bays it is probably related to the big ships uh, boat so the, when they uh, landed to their big ships their boats also taken to land and uh, for the maintenance and use during the summer we also found um, one agricultural place just at the opposite part of the 
um, island, and we understood that here was used as sets, and here was used as a graveyard, because the famous Kilikian wine uh, also probably had been produced on the island. And we also have detected sea level change, uh, about 30 centimeters sea level change, we could understand from them. And also there are some earthquakes, this is a slipway, uh, and these are just signs of earthquakes on the island. And uh, early Bronze Age remains, archaic remains, late Iron Age, uh, uh, age remains, and 4th, 3rd century BC remains, uh, with uh, uh, newer remains and older remains too. They are probably from Neolithic or Bronze Age, different type obsidian and other remains, and also we have found one probably calcolithic uh, 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 stone remains, and others are probably Neolithic or Early Bronze Age. Okay, now you see that uh, at the book of a black man, known, um, known, okay, I'm going to, to mix. Uh, <laughs> uh, these are uh, from the archaeological records, they are not in situ. From the records, these are the biggest slipways, uh, mainly uh, connected to the Roman and the Greek uh, records. Uh, in Kizikos, for example, in Marmara Sea, there are none of them has been found, by the way. And the others are very similar. In Pire, as you know, there are about 20 uh, slipways known, but nothing else. And I can say that about 300 institute slipways the Institute of uh, the biggest Institute of Slippe of the world. And end of my presentation. Thank you.